Good afternoon. My name is Ben Weisenberger. I'm an application engineer with Ally PLM Solutions. I want to welcome you to the Ally PLM Lunch Bite series. These sessions are designed to briefly explore capabilities within Solid Edge that you may not be aware of. Uh, we hold these sessions uh, once a month now at 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central. Uh, today's session is on ordered and synchronous modeling. If you have any questions during today's session, please write them down and send us that in an email. Uh, we want these sessions to be informative to you, so please send us any topics that you want us to cover. Uh, like I said, we're going over synchronous and ordered modeling today. Uh, what synchronous modeling does is it helps accelerate your design. Uh, you can make fast, flexible edits and improve uh, imported design. Um, one big thing that many people aren't aware of is that you can use both synchronous and ordered in the same model. You don't strictly have to do a synchronous model or ordered model. You can combine the two. Uh, existing models with ordered features uh, can utilize synchronous method. So you can use your uh, existing ordered models and add synchronous features on top of them. You can also add ordered features to synchronous design. Um, Ordered features are ideal for process type parts such as casting or machining parts, uh, also components such as weld weldments. Uh, within Solid Edge, you can decide whether you want your uh, parts to open in a synchronous mode or an ordered mode. To do this, you can go to the application button and Solid Edge options and go to helpers. And here you can uh, select whether you want it to open in a synchronous mode or ordered. Um, also, when you open the part, you can right click and say transition to ordered or transition to synchronous if you want uh, either method. You can also go to the tools tab and select synchronous or ordered and I'll show you all this later. Uh, ordered features may be necessary to maintain associativity between parts such as uh, inner part copies as well as variable radius rounds. So those are done within the ordered mode. And uh, you'll notice that when you're in each mode, you have a different uh, menu and control. So if you right click, you'll see that with ordered, you can uh, go in and edit the profile or definition of your sketches. Um, within synchronous, you have the ability to separate or break features as well as attach and attach them. So let's go ahead and get into Solid Edge and do some modeling now. Here we have uh, the Iron Eagle lawn mower. I'm sure so many of you have seen this before. Uh, what we're going to do is model an engine cover back here, and we're going to use both synchronous and ordered. So we got a display configuration here. We'll turn off some of the parts. We're going to edit into this part here. We have a sketch drawn already. And what we're going to do is extrude uh, the sketch so we can go ahead and select it. And with synchronous, we have grab and go tools, so we can just grab that sketch and shoot it out uh, any distance we want. And we can add some rounds to it. We'll add some 100 millimeter rounds to the back of this. Uh, next, we can just go ahead and sketch on top of our part here. We're going to make a cutout, so we'll just sketch that here. We can grab that region then. And again, with our grab and go tool, it knows if we pull away to add material and if we push through, it's going to cut away. So we can go ahead and cut away some material there. We can add another round to the inside here and we'll make that 20 millimeters. And then we can go ahead and if we want to mirror this to the other side, we can just then select it. And we'll hit our mirror command. And we'll mirror it across there. Uh, next, let's say we want to uh, make this front face align with the back of the seat here. We can do that with our face relate command. So we'll relate that here to the back of the seat. Now we can go ahead and grab the top of this part again and extrude it. We can move it up 100 millimeters in case we want to make that bigger. Again, we're going in here. We're not really, uh, we didn't have any design intent. We're just going in and designing as we go. So here we have a little interference. We want to cut this part out. Uh, we can do our projective sketch command here, select this face. We want to project with an offset. 
and we can select our background geometry, accept that, and we want to project it uh, with an offset of 10 millimeters. And we'll select another vertical face here and project that out. With our trim corner, we can connect those two edges. And we can highlight both those lines. And with extrude, we can then extrude this region. If we hit spacebar, that'll allow us to cut this out then. And we can remove that material. We'll hide our background components for a minute here so you can see this a little better. We're going to add in some more rounds here to the front of this part and a dimension that we can go ahead and edit later if we need to. Now what we're going to do is we're going to transition this to order. So we can go up to tools and change our model to order mode. Now what we're going to do in order here is create some sketches and uh, do some surfacing. So we'll select our sketch and our plane that we want to use. We're going to do a uh, curve here. So we'll go ahead and uh, sketch a curve. We're going to make a stylized surface to the top of our part here. So we have our first curve. Then we need a second curve to do our uh, curve path for our surface. So we'll place that. I will do our arc by three points to create our second curve. Place that. We're going to use our relay commands to connect that to our previous curve. And we'll then convert that to a curve. And close sketch. Now to connect these two, we can use our blue dot uh, command here and select the two curves. And now there's a blue dot place where those two intersect. We go ahead and use our blue surf command then. And we can select the line and then project our curve step here and create our surface. And this is all done in order. To, um, it's recommended that you do surfacing in order to that. It's easier to do. Uh, what we're going to do here then is replace our face, our top face up here with our surface that we just created to create a nice stylized surface on top of our part here. Then we can go ahead and add some rounds to this. We'll add some 20 millimeter rounds. Accept that and we'll add another round to the top of our part. And we'll also add a thin wall here. And it's best to do your rounds and thin walls uh, towards the end of your uh, design. And I'll talk more about that later. So there we have our part. Now let's say we want to make some changes. Since we started this in synchronous, uh, and we drew this uh, face here in synchronous, we can make a synchronous edit to it then, even though we're still in ordered mode. So if we drag our steering wheel down, we can then move these faces. And let's say we want to rotate them in 10 degrees. We can also do that with our side face here since this was drawn in synchronous as well. We'll rotate that in two degrees. We placed this dimension earlier, and let's say we want to make this opening wider. We can select that. And with five rules, it'll move both of those faces at the same time. So we can make that 400 and make it a little wider. If we turn on our background components too, we got a little gap back here, so let's rotate this face to fill that space up. So we'll rotate that face out to 20 degrees. Now let's say you want to change the design of our curves up here. Well, to do that, you can select the blue dot and do a dynamic edit. We can change that to shape edit for both of our curves and select the axis that we want to move it in. We want to do it in the z-axis. Now if we click and hold on our blue dot, we can then move those curves and edit our features. Also, we can select our curves that we drew, and we can edit these as well to edit our overall shape. So we can click and drag on there. We can also do a local edit at uh, each individual point if we want to, uh, let's say, edit this back part of it. If we turn our background components back on, you can see we have a little bit of inter interference over here. So we can go ahead and do a cutout. We're going to do a cutout on our plane here. Get it oriented in the right way. Now we're just going to sketch uh, what we want to cut out here. So we'll just do a quick sketch up and over that part that's sticking through. We'll do an include and include some geometry uh, from our part already. And we'll do a fillet then, 20 millimeter radius to complete it. We can click and drag over the corners as well to create that fillet. 
So if we close our sketch um, and choose which way we want to cut away, we can cut away up here and cut our material out. And just like that, we created a new engine cover with both synchronous and ordered at the same time. All right, next thing I'm going to show you, I'm going to turn all the parts back on here. We're going to show you this uh, gas tank here. I have it modeled and strictly ordered. Uh, let's say we want to make some changes to it. Let's say we want to move this face down, make these cut outs deeper, and change the angle of our front face here. Well, to do that, we have to go in and find each feature and edit the definition. Let's say we want to make this longer. I want to make this 175. Well, when we hit finish, we have to recalculate all of the features after this cutout. As you can see here, these symbols mean uh, that I have to go back through and recalculate each one of those. Next, we want to change this cutout, our frame clearance here. We want to change this depth to 40 millimeters. And again, it has to go back and roll through all of the features that were added after it and recalculate, it, recalculate each one of those. We're going to uh, change the depth of the hanger clearance as well. We want to just do the extent and make it equal to our other cutout so they're the same. And then it goes back through and has to recalculate each feature. So if you have parts uh, that have a lot of features added to them, it's better to do them in synchronous so you don't have to go back and recalculate uh, each feature that you added. And last, we want to change our angle of this face here. Well, that was added in this first protrusion. If we go back in and edit that, make it 78 degrees, you can see it's going to take a while to calculate all those again. And sometimes when you do this, maybe you got the part from someone else who designed it. You were told to make the change. Well, now look, we have some failed features here. And this isn't what we want. So sometimes it's better to do larger parts with lots of features in synchronous. So I'll show you that now, the same part in synchronous and how we can make those changes quickly. So if we open up this gas tank here, we can then go ahead and edit this in synchronous. We can grab this face, move our steering wheel, and we can drag that down, say 1.5 inches. Next, we can move this face here. We could add a dimension if we want to. We can do distance between, do distance between these two points. And let's say we want to make that 1.75 inches. And then let's say we want to make this face the same as that. We want to make it coplanar. We can do a face relate here and make that coplanar to that face. And finally, to rotate this front face down here, all we have to do is select the face, move our steering wheel so that uh, to the axis that we want to rotate it around, select the torus, and then we can simply rotate this out 10 degrees. And just like that, we don't have any failed features. So sometimes it's better to do a large part than synchronous, like I said before. Um, now we'll do a little bit of sheet metal. So let me change our display configuration again. And we're going to create a cover over this uh, pulley up here. So let's edit into a part here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to do a rectangle by center. Let's make it 190 by 200. And we'll place that. And then with synchronous, we can just grab that region and extrude it down. Now, it already placed the thickness for us. And where that thickness is, is up here on our properties and our material table. If we go there and go to our gauge, here's our sheet metal gauge thickness. And this determines our material thickness and all of our bend radiuses. And this can all be edited and changed uh, any way you want. So with synchronous sheet metal, what we can do is we can pull these flanges off quickly. We can grab more than one at a time and we can pull all three of those down right away. So let's move them down 110. We turn off our background components for a second. 
we can add some dimensions in. Maybe you want to dimension something on the inside or outside of this part because you don't know if it's going to fit over over something or inside of another part. And then with synchronous and live rules, when we move this, it'll move uh, both faces at the same time, keeping them centered uh, where we drew the rectangle. So let's make this 175 for now. We'll turn our background components back on. And we have interference over here, so let's create a job. Well, to do that, all we have to do is draw a line. Again, it doesn't matter where it is because we can go back and edit it later with synchronous. And we can create a jog and just pull this part off. Let's make that 35 millimeters. Now, I just drew that line anywhere, so let's say we want to move this face. I can just grab it and pull it up or down any way I want. We still have interference here, so we want to rotate this face down so we can again move our steering wheel. Grab the torus and we can rotate this out. Say 35 degrees. We can also rotate this face down as well. Say 27 degrees. Now, this front face, we have a little interference down here. So, if we want to, we can grab here and move our steering wheel and we can rotate this whole front edge in. And think about how you'd have to do that in order. That'd be pretty difficult. Well, with synchronous here, we can just grab that and rotate it fast back. I'm going to do it through the wrist arm. If we look on our back here, let's say we want to fill this hole in, we can grab another flange and pull it off quickly and use our face relate again to make these two faces parallel. We can pull some more flanges off pretty quickly here. Make those 40 millimeters so that we can bolt this piece down. We can add a dimension and lock that down as well so that this uh, face will always be 40 millimeters wide if we go in here and rotate this face out. So that it reaches our bolt over there. Then we can go in and add a quick break corner and break these corners so there's no sharp edges. And one last thing is we'll add a dimple on top up here. Uh, we can relate this then since we didn't place it on the center. And do a quick dimple. And just like that, without any sketches or pre-planning, we created a nice synchronous sheet metal part here. And you can go in and do a flat pattern of it quickly as well, just with two clicks. And there's our flat pattern. So just like that, it's pretty quick to do synchronous sheet metal, and you can pull flanges off quickly. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you is some more uh, ordered and synchronous together. So let me open up a new part here. Now this is a fork assembly off of, let's say, like a bicycle on the front here. So we added into one of our parts here, designed in ordered mode. Uh, in order mode, you have this over here called feature playback. You can go in and uh, see the order that the features were created. So we can go ahead and hit play on that. You can watch uh, the order as it, as those features were added. So let's say we want to go in here and add some drafts in. Well, to do that, we have to go back into our cutout, do our draft command, select our faces here, and we can add some drafts. And then we want to add draft to the inside as well. So we can select those faces. And now we have to go down to our bottom feature here and hit go to to recalculate those. So now we have some drafts added to it. The next thing we're going to do is go into our protrusion here and edit the profile. Let me turn on the background components first, sorry. Because what we want to do is we want to line up our hole uh, with this um, pipe that's already here. So to do that, we're going to use our include command and include the center of that. And we want to relate uh, our arc up here to the center of that circle. Also, um, 
we want to extend these uh, edges out here. Let's say we wanted to change our design and uh, make it wider so we can go here and add 15 millimeters to that and close our sketch. And we can then update our links to update those uh, other pipes out to the holes that we created. The uh, next thing we want to do then is uh, change our top part up here and we want to make that uh, smaller or bigger, excuse me. So what we want to do is go to our protrusion five, go to uh, edit definition. And what we want to do then is add a dimension here. I want to make this part longer. So we're going to add 15 millimeters to it. And finish that. Let's say we want to keep this thickness at 15. So what we're going to do is go to inspect and go to minimum distance. And we want to inspect this distance here. And we see that it's 15 millimeters. We can create this as a variable and make this the top thickness and save that variable. So now if we come in here, and lower this down. So now if we go in here and do our edit definition and change our extent, we can bring this down to the bottom of that bearing. And if we go back and look at our variable, you can see that it's not the 15 that it was before. So we have to go in and change uh, one of our measurements. So if we go back in here and do a dynamic edit, we can then add a formula to this. We can do minus 15 minus 12.45. And then that'll give us our 15 millimeter distance there. So now let's go ahead and do this with ordered and synchronous parts at the same time. So we'll open the same thing back up again, add it into the part one more time. Then we can uh, transition some of these uh, ordered features here and move them to the synchrony. So we want to add draft again. To do that, we can just grab the faces that we want. Move our steering wheel up to a pivot point here. And then we can rotate those faces out. And with five rules and symmetry on, it'll bring those other faces with us. Now, let's say we want to keep those these bottom holes here complete. Well, we need to turn on model priority then. And that'll keep those holes cutting through that face. So let's move this out 10 degrees. Next, if we turn on our uh, background jumper components, this isn't lined up. We can just grab that circle, grab the steering wheel, and we can center it to that pipe. Same with these uh, outer circles. We want to move them out 15 millimeters, or we can move the steering wheel uh, onto the edge in the direction that we want to move those. We can move them out 15 millimeters then and update our length, and then we'll update. Next, we want to move this down, but we want to keep that 15 millimeters again. So what we can do is add a dimension and lock that dimension so that face will always be 15 millimeters. We can then grab that top face, drag it down to the bottom uh, of our bearing. And just like that, we have our part. So sometimes it's quicker to transition some of the features to synchronous and, uh, instead of ordered. Uh, just two other quick little examples we have. Uh, one of them, let me open it up here. Uh, here uh, we have a bracket on a sheet metal part here. And what we want to do is create a copy with this. Well, synchronous, uh, you can do quick copies. So what we want to do is move our steering wheel to a certain point. Uh, we want to do it up to this top point so we know uh, that we, we can relate that to this point over here. And all we have to do is hit copy up here. That creates a copy of the bracket. Then with the steering wheel, we can move it. And if you want to uh, hide the part while you're moving it, you can do Control-Shift-D. 
and you're still moving the part, it's just not giving you the preview, and we can go over it and relate it to that point. And now what this does is it gives us uh, some options here. Uh, when you copy parts of subassemblies, you can reassign relationships. So do not repair, the same option that would come up uh, when you copy an ST3, but that would have a window that said delete, depress, or cancel. In ST4, we can attempt to repair the relationships instead. You can adjust any major lines with the top option here. Um, I will attempt to replace the new faces if possible. If you attempt to replace faces, it will ask you to select what part you want to attempt to replace the faces from. Uh, you also have the options to replace offset values where possible or to replace the new faces where possible. So we're just going to do the top option here. And what you see it did is it created three mates for us. They're the exact same mates that are applied to this part, that are now applied over here to this part. So it's fully constrained. And then my last example here has to do with rounds and blends. Uh, some customers have come to us with problems uh, with their models failing. A majority of the time it's because they place rounds on the part early on in the design. And when they try to make an edit later, those rounds fail and they cannot be recomputed. Um, Kind of best practice for placing rounds is to wait until the end of your design and then place them in an ordered environment. That way, when you go back to edit the synchronous model, it removes the rounds while you make your changes and then it'll recalculate them after you finish making your changes. So here we can place uh, some rounds. Some differences here between synchronous and ordered. In synchronous, you also have blend and chamfer equal setbacks and chamfer unequal setbacks. If you look at round and ordered, uh, you'll just have round and chamfer, but once you open those commands, you'll have other options that you don't see here. So we're just going to do round real quick. And do a couple quick rounds, no particular order. Now in ordered, uh, to change this corner here, you could reorder them in your pathfinder, the different rounds if you created uh, a chain round around the bottom here, around the other edges. In synchronous, you can right click on that corner and you can say reorder rounds and it'll reorder the rounds for you. So that's just, if you're in synchronous and you're doing the rounds in synchronous, that's one way you can reorder it. Uh, but with rounds um, and ordered, you get to a little easier, you have more options to change the blend and rounds. Uh, if you want to learn more about blend and rounds and synchronous and ordered mode, you can watch our other watch bite and that covers these topics as that also covered thin walls and part drafts as well. All right, uh, replays of our launch bites can be seen on our website at allycom as well as our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash allycom. Uh, thanks for your attention. I appreciate it. I hope you found this session informative. Uh, please email us any questions that you may have or future topic suggestions. Uh, once again, I appreciate your time. Thanks and have a great day.